Hi, it's Matt. This time I have a transparent watercolor painting of a morning dove. It's another little one. It's 7 by 10 inches. Um, this one is vertical, which doesn't necessarily lend itself as well to the horizontal format on YouTube, but it allows us to see a little bit more of the mixing of colors in the original reference material. So we'll do the best we can. I started with a wet-on-wet -wet wash. I wanted to have a very soft background, so I really wet the paper down well and then started bringing in a couple of mixed colors fading from blue to a purple at the bottom. Then while the paper was still wet, I wanted to start suggesting some blurred out branches. The wet water of the paper is going to carry those lines and blur them out as it dries up. And so we're going to end up with some nice soft shadow and, or shapes. I then brought in some other um, tones of dark purpley colors and let those sit in the wet paper and those will diffuse out too. A third layer for some other branches in the background and these I put on the paper as it was drying but I put in some wet on the edges of it to carry the edges so it would be a nice soft background on these. You can see me wet it with just water on the sides to diffuse that. Hit it with the hair dryer, lock those colors in. And then I wanted to put in, now that I have the soft background, I wanted to have a middle ground. I'll have the, a, the, the, I'll have the branches in the foreground highly rendered. I wanted something kind of at a middle level of detail. So I brought in this purpley brown using a number six round brush that was really sharp. Um, this allowed me to go from the fat lines of the thick part of the branch to the thin parts as it gets smaller. Um, so now I have some middle grounds. After this, I started putting in a little bit of shadow on these. I don't want a whole lot of detail, just enough to suggest a little bit of depth. And this middle ground will play well once we have the blurred background, we'll have the middle ground, and then we'll have the highly detailed foreground. After looking at this for a little bit, I decided I needed a little bit more of that uh, middle ground, so I put in another layer or two of kind of just a, a light glaze showing some other branches kind of blurring out in the background. Give it a little more depth, a little more interest, something to travel, keep your eye traveling through the page. Um, at this point, I started removing all that liquid frisket that was protecting the white of my paper. Um, and there was a little blotch down at the bottom that didn't quite get covered up with paint um, because it was a blob of the frisket, so I had to repair this um, using those same tones I just did. I hit it with a fine brush and covered up those areas. I needed to take the white of the paper and transfer the rest of the sketch onto the page, and so I used tracing paper and then a folding bone to uh, burnish those lines back onto the paper. So now I had a good uh, map to go from. Like always, I started putting in a wash of my lightest local color. And so I started with the branches with a nice warmish brown, and I covered all those areas. I'll leave the white of the snow alone um, because I want to have that as high contrast. And then I started putting in the lightest local colors of the bird. A nice sandy brown and the, the darker gray brown at the back. And so now I have basically the whole thing covered, the main local colors, and I can start worrying about picking in the details and building up more um, color and realistic um, patterns as I went. Started putting in the shadows of the snow, and you can see to the right on the palette, I'm using glazes and I'm using very transparent. Um, pigments. I'm not working opaquely at this point at all. I'm trying to build in a lot of those, uh, those, those darker colors a little bit at a time, which will build some of the realistic textures. Second set of glazes on the morning dove. And you can see a little bit that in the original painting, or, or the original photograph that I had, I took that in the backyard. The morning dove is you know, in a snowy environment, but it's it's all kind of muted browns and grays. I wanted to push this in a different direction when I did the painting. So I made my background with lots of cool colors. And then my foreground elements, my bird, my branches, are going to have a lot of warm elements. Those warm elements against those cold are really going to help the painting pop off the page. And because we've got the cool background, the warm foreground, it should really build uh, 
a nice uh, difference in, in tone that'll help pop. Um, at this point, I started putting in some blues, which would be the reflected sky color, into the shadow areas of the snow. And for this, I was using mostly, it was a little bit of cerulean blue and a lot of phthalo blue. More darks underneath the edges of that, the snow. That'll help the snow look white, help the branch look like it's both wet and shaded from the snow and carrying those tones over. For the branch, I used a lot of a lot of yellowy oranges for the top part of it and some purpley colors for the shadow areas. Um, here I'm using a, a magnifying glass, so you kind of lost a good view um, for that. I put the camera off to the side so I could actually see what I was doing instead of the camera. More little details, I switched brushes back and now I'm using the number two um, bringing in some of those warm colors. This will help that pop against that nice cool background. Um, with the bird, I'm trying to establish some of those nice warm orangey tan colors um, using purples and blues for the uh, shadow areas. And then for the bird, I'm also trying to bring in some pinks. It's got these shocking pink feet. I want those not to look out of place because in the real bird, they don't necessarily. I'm uh, using some of those pinks in other areas um, of the branches and on the bird's breast, which will help everything have some harmony to it. And th those pinky red colors are also brought into some of the little buds on the branches. A lot of fussy little details. Many layers. And you can see I I'm not using my pigments very um, opaquely. They're still very transparent glazes, lots of layers. Um, and this is typically how I'm mixing colors on the white of the butcher's tray. That allows me to mix the colors well. It doesn't, the butcher's trays don't stain like some of the plastic ones because they're enameled. The uh, plastic ones sometimes stain with the phthalos, the phthalo blue, phthalo green. And then it's hard to match your colors off of those. The butcher's trays come perfectly clean, and you're always balancing off a perfect white of the tray versus the perfect white of the paper. So I definitely would suggest using those. Great tools. Again, bringing in some shadow details, using mostly uh, phthalo blue and uh, maybe a little cerulean and a little purple sometimes in the deepest shadow areas of the snow. I want the snow to look really white and sometimes bringing in those reflected blues of what the sky would be like builds a nice uh, a nice color and gives your eyes a lot to look at while still reading as a three-dimensional shape instead of just white. Lots of sharp details. I think I switched to a, uh, a small a 5 aught brush for this stuff. Um, and back to the number two. The sharp number two rounds hold a lot more pigment, so they're actually, if, it, if it's really sharp, you can get a fine line and then cover a lot more territory without having to reload the brush. So I really like uh, number two for doing these fine areas of detail. And again, this is a really small painting. You can see compared to my hand that the, the areas of detail are, are pretty tiny. There's another side view, so I'm using the magnifier to do the details on the eyes and a little bit on the beak and the feet. Um, so if you lost a good view, I needed to see what I was doing. Better, you'd only see the magnifier. Um, so here you can see the painting um, in the middle, and then on the left I've got the, the original photo that I took, and on the right the palette where we're mixing stuff up. I changed the, the pose of the bird a lot when I was doing this. I like the photo. It's a fun photo. I like the way it's kind of peeking around the one branch that's sticking up, but that really didn't work when I did the sketch directly from the, the photograph. I needed to change some things for a more traditional pose, a little less leaning over. The bird was a little puffed up funny because of the wind that day. So, you know, I made some corrections to look like more typical morning dove anatomy. Without, without hopefully killing all the charm of the, the thing. I'm trying to capture a moment, but uh, you don't want the bird to look weird either. So hopefully, hopefully that happened. Again, here's another really tiny detail area. You can see that I'm using a, like a 
five or ten odd brush and my the area I'm painting is about the size of my thumbnail um, so it's really tiny little details and you can see how many times I go over these it, it takes a lot of little layers to make it look realistic trying to bring in some of those purples and reds and pinks from the feet into the other areas I switch to a uh, a sharp uh, number two for that part that you just saw close up and here I am just about wrapping it up and working on fussy little details on the wings and getting some little um, details on the flight feathers blotting off a couple of little over paints and things like that pretty much done put my name on it we're, we're there we're done so that was the painting 7 by 10 inches, morning dove. There's more information on the website and on the blog, so come and have a peek. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.